Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be making a mini Roscoe type painting. Um, we're going to use orange and brown. And so let me show you those. Here's the orange, the very like citrusy orange, and then a dark brown, I believe it's sunken ship. Yeah, so very dark brown. Uh, the paints are already thinned a little bit, but we're actually going to thin them out even more. So we're just going to apply just a little bit of paint. Hope you can see that. So I'll put the paint here just in case. All right. So now we've got our little cups of paint and we're actually going to add quite a bit of water. We're going to add more water than paint. So that looks okay. And we'll stir it up. Now I've never made this type of painting before and I've only seen kind of ideas on how he used to do it, although he was very secretive of how he did it. It's, I don't think it's very secretive at all. He just used very thin paint and went over it in many layers. I really think that's all there was to it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the background first. And so we're going to use this really thin paint and just kind of go over the whole painting and then we'll let it dry and then we'll do it again. Now it's pretty warm out here so it should dry pretty fast. A little bit more. See how much water's in here because the bubbles and just how thin it looks. We want to apply these nice even layers. And we'll just go back and forth. And we're really just going to work it in. Now, I don't know if he let it dry. He used oil paints. Um, I don't know if he let them dry beforehand, I think before he moved on to the next color. I'd imagine he would. Um, so I'm gonna run this out to the, the heat real quick, actually. Yeah. So I'm gonna run this out, let it dry off, and then I'll come back. Give me a, give me a couple minutes, guys. All right, in the meantime, I decided that we'll go ahead and do black as well. We'll just do a thin strip of black along the bottom of the painting. So, grab a cup here. Add some paint. And then we'll add our water, which was right here. And that was about it. And a little bit more. Alright. Now I don't know if, um, I don't know if Roscoe actually measured out how much it was, like what the ratio was, whether it was you know, this much thinner to this much paint, or he just kind of winged it, but maybe he had a general idea. I, I don't really know. So let's set that aside, and then I'm gonna go check on the paint. I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, I brought it back. You gotta love that warm Arizona weather. Um, dries these things like nothing. So we'll start with the orange, and we'll do the little orange square here, and then we'll do the black square at the bottom. Okay. 
guys see that okay? Sorry for kicking that. All right. So we'll start here. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I talk about how this paper likes to warp and it's already doing it now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna very slowly kind of mark out our square here. And this square is going to be the bigger of the two. So we're gonna make it this big. Actually, we'll go up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now that we've kind of got our shape here, we'll just fill it in and really work this paint in because it, it wants to sit and we don't want it to. Just gonna keep dragging the paint over and over and over itself so that it works in. I really should say water because it's not really much paint at all, but you know what it is. Just gonna bring that over and over. So I was gonna tell you something funny. So I'm sh I, I don't know if you know who Tony Robbins is. I'm sure you do, because most people do. But anyway, he had a he was telling the story of a, a friend of his that was rich that like had made it in business. And one of the guy's dreams when he was broke was to own original Rothko painting. And so Tony Robbins didn't really know who that was. And so the guy invited him over to his house so Tony Robbins could see it. And he goes over and it was, you know, one of Roscoe's paintings. And he's like, oh look, you know, I just got this for like $80 million or something like that. And Tony Robbins is like, that's it? Like it's a red orange square, I could do that. <laughs> it's, it's just kind of funny because I mean, that's, that's kind of the sentiment against for, for most people who don't really know or respect abstract art. Although, I mean, to be fair, it's not like abstract art can't be recreated, okay? So I understand the argument, and I know a lot of people kind of speak out against uh, abstract art, but the, it's not really so much about the technique um, or the, the paintings themselves as it was the technique. Kind of like Pollock. You know, Pollock, I wouldn't say that his technique couldn't be redone. Obviously, people kind of redo it. But it was the fact that he was the first to do it and that, uh, yeah, he kind of broke tradition. Now they, a lot of these painting painters in the early 1900s were just doing the same type of paintings that everyone else was doing. And so they were kind of breaking, uh, you know, the, the social norm, so to speak. So it's not so much about the paintings themselves as it is kind of what they represented or what they did for society and stuff like that. So I understand the sentiment behind people getting angry about um, abstract paintings and saying that they, they're not good or they don't require skill. I, do, I don't think that's true. I think that to still make good art, you still need a certain level of skill, even if you make abstract. It just depends on what it is. But I also think that the marketplace does reward people who are technically, in challenge, technically inclined 
and master those skills. So even if people didn't agree with it, if you still did a, like if you still put in time and effort and you know created quality work, it'd still be rewarded even if it was abstract. So I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay, so you can see here, I'm just kind of making the uh, this other one, and I'm kind of I want to give it these little rounded edges just to kind of give it this illusion that it's it's floating here. Um, Roscoe kind of had that going for him. Supposedly he would um, he'd actually use paint thinner to kind of wipe away the edges um, to round them out, but. I won't be using paint thinner because I'm using uh, water-based paint, not oil. But on top of that, I don't really think I need it. All right, and that's it. So I think that even as light as the paint was, it's still darker than something Rothko probably would have made. Um, Overall, I don't, I don't hate it, but it's an interesting type of painting. Um, it's very easy to make. I mean, just like I said, very watered down paint um, or thin, whether you use oil or, or acrylic or whatever you use. No, something got in it. Okay. Um, but that's it, guys. That's uh, the mini Roscoe, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will catch you guys in another one. Take care.